So hi, my name is Paul Larson. I'm a uh, program manager manager. So definitely not an engineer anymore, OK, if I ever was. Um, and I'm going to talk about integrating with existing systems. I'm going to focus on IBM, because that's really important to Microsoft. Um, up until recently, I reported to Scott Guthrie. I reported to Bill Staples now. So it's all part of the application platform team. And it's really important to Satya, Scott, and Bill, and of course me, that we enable customers that have existing line of business systems. In my case, it's IBM. In your cases, it's many other systems to be able to integrate with new solutions developed with BizTalk Server and new solutions developed with Microsoft Azure. So I have a couple of background slides, which you probably don't need. Um, how many folks have actually viewed the videos, participated, read the literature on app service? About a third? OK. Uh, so my presentation and my focus is on helping enterprise I IT and enterprise developers. And for our enterprises, what they want to do is they want to engage customers and really enable their, their workforce. And that's done through on-prem solutions, but also with the cloud. Uh, to me, the, the cloud is the ability to develop applications faster, with more agility, and then to scale out to handle those enterprise loads in a way that you can handle them today with IBM mainframe systems and with BizTalk server scaled out. The uh, cloud is also, for me, a big data play. Machine learning, analysis, online analytical processing, and higher scale than ever before. If you want to be able to engage customers, you want to be able to understand your customers. And the way you do that is you get information and data on them, and then you analyze that data. So cloud is also about that. Uh, last week, is that right, Mandy? App service? Two weeks ago? Wow, time flies. Now, a couple weeks ago, we uh, announced a new technology called Azure App Service, which is a new platform for developing applications that allow you to develop high-scale web applications to host mobile apps, mobile apps that can be developed to run on any device, any phone, any tablet, any PC, logic apps, which we've heard references to. We have a session coming up with uh, Steve in a few minutes. Um, that's your modern workflow applications. And then API apps, which I'm going to be talking about in, in focus on IBM. Uh, API apps are a way to monetize APIs inside your organization, across your, your boundaries, as solution provider partners, as software developers like Microsoft. Write good web applications with well-factored APIs and expose those for use within your org and across uh, customer boundaries. In the context of API applications, a uh, modern type of uh, web application that we're developing. These are industry standard, JSON, RESTful web applications that use JavaScript to denote the data inputs and outputs. For connecting to IBM systems, we've developed three API app, what we call connectors. And we call these connectors because they connect systems together. They connect Azure web applications, logic app, mobile apps, API apps, to existing systems. And we focused, we think, on uh, at least two of the, of the top uh, connectors. And another one in here you may not think is, is popular, but it comes along with the other ones. We're going to do an MQ connector, DB2 connector, and Informix connector. Um, how many folks here have used uh, IBM Webster MQ with, say, BizTalk server? So I almost expect everyone, right? OK, more than half. To us, this is the number one important connector to deliver. Um, Azure, messaging, service bus, biz talks, all about sending messages, messaging oriented middleware. And so we've spent a lot of time recently, uh, in fact, we just got started on this in October, to develop a Microsoft client for WebServe MQ. So it's our own code, it's all managed code. Um, there's no code here from IBM Hersley. And what that allows us to do is to have an Azure web application connect directly to WebStorm MQ, whether it's in the cloud or on-prem. If it's on-prem running in Windows, you can use hybrid connectivity. It's part of Azure. If it's on-prem running in, say, a mainframe, you can use some new technology we're going to be talking about later today called a service bus relay to relay the messages down to a non-Windows server. And in that context, the connector runs on-prem inside IIS, and there's a proxy that runs in Azure, and they communicate via service bus, relaying messages down. 
the DB2 and the Informus connectors, the reason we did both those together is DB2 is the next most popular IBM adapter in the BizTalk world. It's also really important in big data, machine learning. So power, power pivot, power query running on-prem, also those technologies running in the cloud, they really want to consume DB2 data. It's really popular in retail and other large enterprises, and so we want to get at that data and allow the, um, the big data cloud to incorporate information our customers and partners through DB2. DB2 and Informix, they share a common technology. It's the wire protocol called DRDA, Distributed Relational Database Architecture. It's an industry standard, and so if we implement one, we get the other. So looking closely, at, a little bit closer at the uh, Microsoft connector for MQ, this uh, connector is a very thin web code. It's C-sharp code with some Java code, very thin layer on top, and it communicates directly with this new Microsoft managed client code for MQ, it supports the IBM Webs for MQ client to server protocol and formats. So message header formats, uh, basic encoding, authentication, and uh, transactions. Currently, the, the uh, public preview that was released on the 24th of March, our MQ connector is not supporting distributed transactions. That's, that's in development. As I mentioned before, you're not just connecting to MQ running in the cloud, which IBM supports. You can also run uh, MQ connected back on-prem as well with these two alternate technologies. Um, frankly, we think a lot of our customers will have express route. That's our feedback. And if not, they'll have a VPN connection. I use one of those myself. And that gives you a fat pipe that supports TCP connectivity back on-prem as well. So you have many options to connect on-prem uh, from the cloud. And because we're implementing the protocol ourselves, we can connect to any remote uh, broker, so any remote IBM MQ server running on any of these platforms. Currently, the uh, preview allows pretty uh, basic functionality, allows you to read messages, single messages, multiple messages. You can read a message based on an ID. Uh, you can write messages, uh, single or bulk, using arrays uh, denoted in, in JSON. The best way to get started with the connectors is using the built-in uh, Swagger technology uh, to see inline documentation based on the connection back to the queue. It'll give you examples and how, what the syntax is and allow you to just try it out. I'll show you that. And currently, the uh, MQ client that we've developed supports the latest IBM MQ version 8. So we haven't gone and supported back-level versions like 7.2 yet. Okay. Let's take a look at this thing. My now f favorite browser is Google Chrome because it works so well with the Azure portal. If you, <laughs> hey, I've been at Microsoft for a while. It's the truth. You have to say it. So you can find these things various ways. I mean, we have a bunch of different search terms in here. The one that doesn't seem to work is MQ by itself. Apparently, a, a two-character search term is not supported. But uh, if you put in IBM, you'll see the three connectors to which I'm referring. Here's the MQ connector. And some basic information on it. Uh, there's a couple of hyperlinks here as well. This uh, documentation link will take you back to the, the core app service API app documentation where we'll be developing some content specific to the MQ connector in the near future. Manny's going to lean on me and develop the content for you. And then how many folks have used the portal? Yeah? It's a little slow. Yeah? It's just me? Sometimes. So I think we'll try to connect, create one of these from scratch. Let's see how we do here. If I get stuck, then we'll, uh, we'll stop. So the, the connection information is um, shredded out. We had a connection string in there before. It was kind of cryptic. Uh, it wasn't really easy to figure out the the terminology. If you use the MQ connector, it was like the URI in the port definition, but we couldn't, we didn't get a lot of feedback that was very intuitive, so we shredded out the connection string. Q name, Q P L one. I have a Q defined. Q manager, Q M one. I developed a channel for the client server connection. Yeah, and what's the name of my server? Where do I want to go today? So I am going to 
pretty much demo exclusively with uh, cloud VHDs. My apologies. Uh, really important, oh, connect, connect to Alice. This is really important. So this is the user identifier. For some reason, my interns want to call it connect as. They think that's the right terminology. I like your feedback on that. But this is basically the authentication context, the username. We can do destructive or non-destructive reads. Uh, we have timeouts in milliseconds. I think it should be seconds. And we have a cute little uh, demo capability that's good for partners. So if you want to demo this on airplane, you can. It'll actually cast matches and, and, and send them back, which I'm not using. That out. Okay. And that's cooking up. Looks like it's going to bake pretty well in this case. might take forever. So trust me, it will work, but we'll go pick one that's already working. I don't have the patience for it. Also don't have the time. So if we browse to one that I created, a, I don't know, probably a couple days ago, here's that inline documentation. So the home page on the web service provide basic docs, examples, description of what the connection properties mean. And we bring up the UI. It's just a nice, easy way to use this. We can uh, use the uh, API queue messages to read back all the messages. You'll see two in there. We can do a post and uh, send a message. This is actually a case where we don't give you the full syntax, which is unfortunate. It takes a data element and then the message string We are working on some uh, encoding capability for you as well. If we look at the queue manager, we have two messages already. We're going to add another. Try that out. Oh, I got an error. What did I do wrong? Oh, I do. Thanks. And there's our message. If we go and check the queue. Nice. I closed it. Well, let's go and see if we... If we can read it back. And let's get the messages. And there's the message. Woohoo! It works. Well, trust me. I know it's a real simple demo. Like next year we'll do something more complex. But we started developing the MQ connector, the Web API app, uh, about eight weeks ago. And the client itself is only been in production for less than six months. So that actually is pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> Basic stuff. Step, step, step. So I'm sure you have a lot of questions about the MQ connector. And I promise to reserve a few minutes here at the end for that. In terms of DB2 and Informix, I mentioned the connectors. Pretty basic functionality at the top end. The DB2 and Informix connectors are a little bit thicker because they have a lot of support for OData, which is an industry standard for data access. It's very popular with the machine learning, big data teams. So they want to consume our connector directly as well. So it will also be used for things like Power Query in the cloud. It has um, connectivity at a three-layer architecture. So the connector is an ADO.NET consumer. It talks to our new 
fully managed, well, of course it's managed, ADO and provider for DRDA, which talks to a brand new Microsoft client for DRDA. So this is all new, uh, fully managed code. The ADO Net provider didn't exist before. It's a common DIRTA connector. It supports anything that DRDA supports today, DB2 and Informix, and then a new client. Uh, the client supports TCP only. We're not supporting SNA with it right now. And it uses industry standard client to server connectivity. So uh, there's really good support uh, by IBM for DRDA and, and all of their DB2 and Informix servers. And we're directly with those engineers in their labs when we have questions, we call them up and they answer our calls and help us out. So um, select, insert, update, delete. We haven't implemented a call yet, that's coming. But we do have the facility for having custom SQL statements that you define in the app settings, which goes into the web config. So you can predefine call statements. We also have a really cool way to do um, the receive port in BizTalk. Uh, the old one for SQL and the, the current one for DB2 and Informix allows you to do a really cool read and delete or read and update. We have that support in here as well. And then for OData, uh, we do industry standard select, insert, update, and delete. We have the ability to do insert, update, and delete on a single row or multiple rows. Our default was bulk, but we went back and implemented single row as well so you can use it with logic apps. And then we support all the versions of DB2 that, that matter. Uh, let's see. So I've already predefined a number of connectors for DB2. I have one for a relay. I have one that I created just a little while ago while I was sitting. So let me show you the config on this really quick. It's a little bit different. It has some different app settings. Uh, if I look at the settings on the API host itself, these are the settings that are specific to the uh, DB2 connector. They're very similar to what's available in the, the informants connector, of course. Takes a connection string. Uh, to define the connection string, it's the same way you define it for BizTalk. You use our data source wizard. You can run that in Visual Studio. You can run it standalone. It does require a copy of our client, which you can get through SQL Server or through BizTalk. You just download the MSDN copy. Um, at some point, we're not good at GUI either. We'll probably do a, a GUI version of our data source wizard. And then you, uh, an important point is that you put a list of tables here, and the tables are a predefined set of uh, collection items in a DB2 and Informix database that you want to be able to interoperate with. And if you list the tables here, then what we do when the, the API app starts up is we go and fetch the meta, prefetch the metadata on these tables. We get the uh, column metadata back so that we can develop the Swagger documentation to help you out as you're evaluating this and developing apps. And then also, we generate uh, dynamic OData models through the ND framework, and that, that gives us the OData support. Um, On-premise, true or false, and service bus connected string is that service bus relay take capability that Samir will be talking about later today. Back here, I'll just do a quick query on this. If we read the uh, department data using the OData call, And here we are fetching back all the rows in, in the department table. If I were to uh, insert a row, here's an example of really good Swagger support. not really the right location. That's a dirt location. I was throwing that in there for the demo. And if we post in rows affected one, so it did insert the row.
And there's that new row we just created. So it does work too. It's actually a lot more capable. The DB2 and DRD or the DB2 and Informix connector we started developing like last October, and then the client itself uh, we've been working on for well over a year. So it's it's much further along. Uh, Informix, pretty much the same thing for Informix. Database is real popular in healthcare, uh, government, other uh, organizations. Um, different set of servers that it connects to. They run on open platforms like Linux, Unix, Windows. It also works. I'll show you real quick. Connectivity or configuration is exactly the same. The connection string is a little bit simpler. Doesn't support as many different uh, connection attributes or properties. It also takes a list of tables so that we can generate the models dynamically. You can think of it as a security feature as well. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do a get on this guy. And it actually returned an error. So I, I believe that um, I connected to a, a database that I'm recycling. That's good. We want everything to work, right? Um, really quickly, I mentioned logic apps. And we went and worked on this over the last week, so we have support for logic apps, which is really nice. We know in, in BizTalk world, orchestration is very popular with our customers. And here's a case where we're going to do a select from a department table. Real simple. Run that right now. It's about 20. Under, over, over. Over. About that. And here's my call. If you're looking at the timings on these, things seem really slow, right? And I, I'll grant you that. Some of, the, some of the connections we're having are, are slow, and I'm not sure why. It could be contention on the back-end systems in the, uh, the Azure region we're using. Uh, when I'm connecting on-prem, the delay going through the relays and the VPNs is a little bit uh, less spry than I would expect. Here's the input from the uh, Logic app into the O data model, and then here's the output from that call. I'm not too concerned about the performance at this point. I know the technology that we're developing is, is very performant on-prem, and I'm sure there's, there's tuning we can do and learnings we can make over the upcoming months before this becomes available in retail channel. And there's our uh, query coming back, so that's pretty cool too, Logic Apps. So just a level set, this is the first cloud software our team has developed. We've been doing it for a little bit less than six months. We're pretty proud of the work we've done. Um, we're learning a lot of new terminology, a lot of new tools, Swagger, Postman, Fiddler, Google, Chrome, like that stuff. Um, but the, the, the bulk of what we do is to integrate existing online systems. And we do that through our infrastructure technologies, like our emulators and our, our uh, SNA services, print services, that sort of thing. The data connectors are really popular in BizTalk and SQL, so popular that we let SQL Server and Office use them for free uh, without additional license. And then the messaging we think is really popular for the cloud because it's so popular in the BizTalk world. Uh, it's where we did the BizTalk adapters of WCF channel for WebServerMQ, and now these new uh, connectors for MQ and the MQ client. I want to mention right here that we actually have a BizTalk adapter for Informix. It's in pre-release. It's in production at a customer site. It's been in production at one customer for about nine months now. Um, and we have another customer that should be going live in the near future here in Europe. I want to invite uh, Steve Milan, who's an architect from 
uh, Luxembourg Bank, BCEE, and he's also our MVP. We also have what we call host-initiated technologies. So everything I'm showing you here is from the concept of uh, the Windows environment or the Azure environment connecting out, so client-initiated, if you will, to the back-end servers. We also do what we call host-initiated, and they work really well in the cloud. So imagine, if you will, a, a Azure service, I was going to call an API, but it's not strictly, strictly speaking an API app, an Azure service that operates uh, as a listener for a mainframe program that wants to call into another application in Azure using our transaction integrator host-initiated processing. Or imagine, if you will, a mainframe COA program trying, uh, doing a select locally against DB2, but also doing a, a select remotely against SQL Azure. You can do that as well with our host-initiated technologies. These all work on-prem, but we believe in the future we'll be um, evolving these to work in the cloud because they're a natural fit for how most enterprises handle security. Outbound from the enterprise is fairly straightforward. A um, little bit less paperwork, perhaps. It still has to be obviously very secure. Um, inbound into your organization, which is the classic way of using Azure, not so, so easy to uh, develop. And that's why we have things like the uh, hybrid connectors and the Azure uh, Relay. But having host-initiated services sitting on the a Azure boundary and allowing the mainframe systems to call out into that, um, we think it'll be a, a good play. As far as on-premise goes, we're developing a new version of what we call host integration server in our BizTalk adapters. I already mentioned the BizTalk adapter for Informix. And these are planned for a future release to support the new <coughs> Windows operating systems. So first of all, I think everybody is interested, when will it come out, the next release of host integration server? Uh, I'd, I'd I believe the next release of host integration server will, will follow the Windows release by some number of months. I don't have any specific dates on that. So who of you is uh, actually using IBM MQ clients for BizTorc? So some of you. So what do you think about now having MQ client in AJS? You have all, I think, issues also with the compatibility mode, with actually version 8 is not actually supported with BizTorc because there are still issues. But what do you think, could it be interesting for you also to use HAS together with uh, IBM MQ? What do you think, Paul? Customers will be happy using only HAS in order to install the whole bunch of IBM MQ 300 Max on top of uh, their BizTalk up infrastructure? Yeah, I'm immediately sorry I brought Steve up here. You're asking the rude Q&A questions. Scheduled dates and uh, what are we going to do with the MQ client? So the MQ client we developed specifically on request of customers that wanted cloud connectivity for MQ. IBM's not providing managed cloud connectivity for MQ that would be efficient to run in an API app in app service. So we developed our own client for that. IBM does support MQ server running in a VHD. You can go up to the gallery. You can install it. Um, but a fully managed, high performant, elegant, simple MQ client that fits in our stack, that's something we had to develop ourselves. Uh, are we going to make that available on-prem. Uh, it really depends on customers like yourself that, that demand that, and then we can make that happen as well. So let us know what you want. Questions? Comments? No? Yep. Okay. Um, yes, so the MQ client uh, supports today in the preview. Uh, it supports SSL 3.0, which I think is similar to TLS uh, 1.0. And I thought we'd implemented support for TLS 1.2. I know it's in the Dirta connectors for DB2 and Informix, so that's, that's planned as well. We definitely recommend that you use SSL to, uh, for authentication and encryption for these connections. And uh, we're not going to make it required, but it's optional, and we, the documentation is, is pretty forthright about it. You should really use that. We expect customers to. I will also be around here, so if you have questions about particular host integration server or integrating it or putting a new infrastructure in place, you can also come to me and ask me questions afterwards. Also, if you are more familiar speaking French or German, I'm speaking all different languages, so you're welcome. And I speak poor West Coast English only, so you won't understand a word I'm saying because you didn't in the last half hour. Hey, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time and look forward to talking in the next couple of days.